running through the rain, seeing through the smoke, facing all my goals. I know how it feels when it's hard to make a way. But we rise today, ain't no easy way to get through the days when it's hard we say. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, gonna get by when the going gets rough. I'm gonna love life till I'm done growing up. And if I go down, then I go down swinging. I still smiling and my heart still singing. I'm gonna get by when the going gets rough. I'm gonna love life till I'm done growing up. And if I go down, then I go down swinging. I still smiling and my heart still singing. How's everyone doing tonight? All right, yeah, my name's Matali Banda. I'm from this place called Boston, Massachusetts. I live in this place called Brooklyn, New York. And I grew up in this place called Atlanta, Georgia. So when I wrote this music, I was writing about home. And for me, home means so many things. It means Massachusetts, it means New York, it means Atlanta, it means the Midwest where I also grew up. But more importantly than that, it means where my family's from. And that's Malawi. And so when I wrote this song and this music, I was writing about home and I was writing about when I went home. And I was writing about what home gave me and what home did to me and how home saved me. Right. I wanted to tell this story, but I wanted to tell this story without saying the why. Why did I feel like I needed to be home? Why did I feel like I needed to be saved? Why did I feel like I needed to be changed? And why did I feel like home needed to give me something? And I wondered why was I scared to do that, right? Why was I scared to address the why? And I realized because the why scared me, right? I realized I was running from that why. And I realized what those whys were. The whys were ghosts. Right. And a lot of those ghosts weren't just my ghosts. But I didn't know it at the time. And when I say ghosts, I don't mean what we see in the movies or in ghost stories. But what I mean is the pain, trauma, abuse, all these things that we deal with, all this pain, all this negativity that stays with us until we address it. And so for me, I knew what my ghosts were. I was starting to come into terms with that. Sometimes ghosts, they stick with us. Sometimes they leave us and come back and return to us. And we keep thinking we can outrun them. We keep thinking we can not address them. But that's not how it works, right? And so I was realizing there were some real things that I had to come to terms with as a young adult, a young black man coming into this world. And that was what were my ghosts. And some of those ghosts were from my father and his actions and his inaction. And then how that impacted me, how that impacted my sisters, our family, his marriage, right, his own life. And so at the age of 24, I sat him down and I told him what I was battling. And I told him I had ghosts. And I told him some of those ghosts were his ghosts. And that there's, we might have moved past a lot of things. We might have been at a good place in that moment. But at the same time, I had to get past some certain things. And so he looked at me. And he told me it was time. 
And so the next month, I'm on a plane to Malawi for the first time. And when I went there, I started to see what Malawi meant for him and my family. I started to see the influence that they had in the Malawian independence, and I started to see the things that they went through then and the things that they were going through now. And I started to understand that my dad had ghosts and he was doing his best to get rid of them, but I needed to know what the origins of that story was for me to fully feel like I could keep living and keep moving. And so originally, that's what I wrote this music for. It's about going home, right? And it's about what that might mean. And so all these songs are inspired by growing up and all the different places that I feel like are home. What are we doing with the lights right now? What's going on? Y'all gonna stop messing up my vibe today. All right, I need everyone to just relax, just chill. All right, this is it. You know? All right, so I'm getting my PhD from UMass Amherst. In African American studies, but with a concentration in autoethnography and performance theory. And a part of that is understanding that there's no way you can discuss other cultures without first looking inward at yourself. And so when I wrote this music, I was like, how do I talk about Malawi, but also talk about the fact that I'm a black American that grew up here? Right? And so a lot of this music, it's meant to look at Malawi, it's meant to look at that culture and how I perceive it, but it's also meant to be about all these other places that shaped me and inspired me. So I hope y'all enjoy. So now I'm going to stop talking real quick. What I want to do is, y'all look like you can sing. Can y'all sing? Repeat after me. Ooh. Realize y'all can't go as low as me. Ooh. Let's try that. Just this side now. Ooh, but y'all gonna have to be strong with it, with your chest. Ooh, there's too many in this room not to feel it. A little more, right? A little more. A little more. That's still a little. Mm. We got close to a, a close to a stack in here. All right, keep that going. Now this side. Pay attention. Watch this. Let me hear Nice. I want to hear. I used to be a chorus director. Nice and strong. I'm gonna get by when the going gets rough. I'm gonna love life till I'm done growing up. And if I go down, then I go down swinging. I still smiling and my heart still singing. I'm gonna get by when the going gets rough. I'm gonna love life till I'm done growing up. And if I go down, then I go down swinging. Still smiling in my heart. Give me more.
time Man, I got like a funky read, so that's why I'm like, that's the worst. If you're a read player, you know what I'm talking about. is in Chatuka village in the Nkata Bay region of Malawi. I think it's the best region of Malawi. I'm a little biased. And in this region, the Tonga people, my people, they've lived for generations and generations. And so welcome home. That's how my auntie Miyamoto greeted me. And you look up and you see all the stars. And the next day we woke up we go to the resting place of my grandfather, who I'm actually named after, Umtali Kabanda, and my grandmother, his wife, Jeannie Banda. And we laid down flowers, and we said prayers. And as we were walking away, my auntie turns to me, and she goes, full circle. And she goes, you've come home. You've paid your respect to the ancestors, and they know you're no longer lost. The circle is complete, right? And so when I wrote this song, I wrote this song about that, right? It's called Black Boy Fairy Tales. This whole stuff is called Black Boy Fairy Tales because for me, this felt like a fairy tale, right? I grew up in a, in a way where this idea of going back home to Malawi never seemed possible to me. You know, I was a poor black kid that grew up here. Been homeless twice by the time I was 15, right? So this idea of going there was like, I didn't know. I didn't know I could go there, right? And so, around spring 2019, at the very end of the Baha'i Fast, I was getting ready to perform all this music that I had, I, that I thought was finished. And I was actually in Washington, D.C. at the time. And I know she's somewhere in here. Is Nicole Best in here? Nah, where Nicole? Ah, what's up, girl? <laughs> So I was, I was playing music with her, and I was going to perform this very song about going home. And I got this call from my mom's, and it was my go-go, my grandfather, her father. And he was sick. And he was 96 years old, and although he had always been sick for a long time and in and out of the hospital, this time felt different. And I could even hear it in my mother's voice that there wasn't much time. And so this song specifically just had me thinking about what does it mean to go home? You know, what does this idea of home going mean, right? You saw that in the title, right? And it's this phrase about going to a place you've never been before that's always been home. Right, so that could be Malawi. But it could also be so much more. You know, maybe it's not somewhere physical. And so when I went to see him, 
as soon as I got back, and the doctor said he had six months, right? And I saw him on Tuesday, and we talked, and he told me so many beautiful things that I still take with me, and I, I don't really share, but it's, it's so much a part of my life and what I do right now. And he told me he loved me, he believed in me, and he wanted me to stand on this music and do something beautiful with it. And I remember when I was leaving the room, you know, and he was sitting there, and it felt like he was looking at something across the way, but no one else could see it. Now, my grandfather was blind, so that's what makes this even more surreal. Now, this was on a Tuesday. Doctors gave him six months to live. He passed away that Thursday. A day before, I was gonna play this music. And so it just had me thinking about what this means and this idea of home going that we're all on, right? I think we're all on this idea and preparing for this next world, right? Because I know he was, you know. Some of y'all might have known him, Raymond Elliott, and he was 10 toes down for Baha'u'llah. You know, and the way he embraced the next journey was so beautiful. And then I think about four years later, just this past July, my grandmother transitioned. And I remember how she embraced it. And how when the doctors said, you know, you have a choice, right? You can keep doing this in and out of the hospital. You can keep coming back here. Or you can make peace with where you're at at 91 years and welcome it. And she looked at me and she looked at my sister and she goes, what do I have to be scared of when I know what's on the other side? Let me say that one more time because when I play in front of all black people, they know how to respond to that. What do I have to be scared of when I know what's on the other side? You know, she talked about praying for the people that she loved that were over there. You know, but there's only so much praying she could do, she told me. They, 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 they further and further and further in, right? And she's like, they're living their lives on that end, right? And it might be time for me to join them. Right, that was in May. And I was fortunate enough to where I got to be with her in those last breaths. All right. Now there's a caveat I'm leaving out of this, right? Last August, my mother went to the family house on Cape Cod. Right, and there's this house that my family owns on my mother's side. And it's been on our family since my great great grand since my great grandmother purchased it in 1954. And she turned it into a bed and breakfast. Not just any bed and breakfast, but a bed and breakfast on the Green Book route. Right, the route that African Americans would take because they didn't know where they could stop. And Massachusetts was no exception to racism in the world. Right, if you're from Massachusetts, you know what I'm talking about. And if you don't, look at work. <laughs> you know, and so my grandmother, my great grandmother, opened up this bed and breakfast so black people, regardless of where they were from, they knew when they were on Cape Cod, close to Bourne, Massachusetts, there was a place where they called home, call home. Now this is a house that I remember going in my whole life. And it was a refuge. We do Thanksgivings, Christmas there, and it was filled with so much life and so much joy. And so it wasn't too far from where we lived in Brockton. And so my mother decided she'd like to go there. And so she met up with her cousin. Some of y'all might know her, Donna Denise, my aunt. And they went and they had a whole weekend plan. And they, they walked up the canal. They saw the sunset. Walked back, and this is beautiful. You ever get the chance? Go to Bourne, Massachusetts. I promise you won't. You won't be disappointed. And they came back. They had dinner. They made jokes. Donna went to bed. My mom, Martha Elliott, went to bed. Their other cousin went to bed. But my mom didn't wake up. a lot and the reason why I'm here right now and I'm doing this set right now is because of her because for a lot of y'all know right where my ATL family at right y'all might have remembered us when we was here you know she sang in the choir you know and, and she loved what Atlanta did for us right me and her we hopped in a U-Haul van from Madison Wisconsin and drove down just me and her solo dolo and what we found here was so beautiful. I wouldn't play the sax if it wasn't for Atlanta. 
right? And so I dedicate this song to her, Martha Elliott. I dedicate this song to my grandmother, Mary Elliott. I dedicate this song to my grandfather, Raymond Elliott. I dedicate this to my father, Kenny Bonda, to my other grandfather, Metallica Bonda, to Jeannie Bonda, to the ancestors, to my auntie Rose, who also recently passed. I dedicate this song to everybody that's trying to find home, because what is home, right, but where, where, where the love and the light is. All right, so now we're going to play the song. How does that sound? hear your voice, it pains me you're not here. And every time I close my eyes, I know that you are near. It pains me to know I can't hold you, guess I gotta spread my wings. The world can be lonely without you, and now I gotta find my way home. Let's speed it up just a little. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. I'm going home. And every time I wake up, and every time I close my eyes, I'm looking for the way up. You're going cross my mind, yeah. I know it's been a year, but you're weighing on my mind, and I don't know what to say. I, you gave me all my dreams, and you taught me how to hope, and I hope I make you proud. But I, I don't know what to do here. I'm still here, been here. If you're here, gotta go, wanna go, home is home, so you know it's
time I wake up And every time I close my eyes I'm looking for the way up And then you go and cross my mind <laughs> Can we just give it up for this band one time? <laughs> Want to keep it a buck 100 with y'all. I just met them today. Never done this before. I think it's going good, right? <laughs> All right. And I want to introduce them, but like I said, I just met them. So normally, like, I got people's names on lock, right? But I'm meeting a lot of new people today. And I'm going to keep knowing the name because this ain't the last time we're playing together, right? Right? Y'all want to play with me again, too? Right? So, like, don't be weird with them afterwards. Like, they just meeting the friends of the faith. Like, don't, don't, you know, just be cool. Just be cool, all right? I want to keep coming to Atlanta. <laughs> all right, so on keys, we got Danny Everett. Like I said, I just met Danny today, um, so I don't know much more. Usually with my bandmates, I got a fun fact or a fun little tidbit. Um, you single, Danny? <laughs> so are they. <laughs> um, worst thing, y'all gave me a mic. All right, next up, we got Shayna, 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 uh, last name, Janine? Jenkins, Shana Jenkins, my phone locked. Yes. And she, she funky on that bass. Shana, you got any fun facts you want to share? She from Atlanta. Let me get this right, let me get this right, let me get this right. Okay, Joshua Dublin. Joshua is not single, so I'm gonna need y'all to chill. Same. You know, his girl's here, she looked like she can fight. You know what I'm saying? So. <laughs> Last but not least, we got Darian Ware on guitar. So. Darren actually is the person that helped me put, put this whole group together. Um, originally, I had, um, you know, I live in New York. I have my New York connection of musicians. And, and something that's cool about the music world is it's kind of like our world of Baha'i Faith, where, like, we kind of just all know each other. And, like, when you go to a city, like, you end up doing a gig, and you're like, oh, you know this guy, you know that guy, what's up? So when I did this, I was like, I did the bird call, right? Who do, who do you all know in Atlanta? And so they, they put me in contact with somebody, and I had a whole band lined up. And then homie got married, and his mother-in-law decided to give him a surprise honeymoon that extended a couple days than what he thought. So homie, homie's chilling right now, living his best life, and I, lo and I love that for him. I do. I love that for him, but I still needed a band. Uh, <laughs> And so he put me in contact with Darian, and then and Darian was, was about that life, and then he just like did the, did the busy work. So I'm really appreciative of that. Uh, nah, right? You're not single. No, no. His girl might be able to fight too, so. <laughs> 
y'all, y'all just need to chill. Just chill. We got, we got a keys player. How about, how about Shane? All right. I might be single too. But ain't nobody asking about me. All right, jokes aside, jokes aside. Um, this next piece. So when I went, when I went back to Malawi, you know, there was, there was really a, a, a main theme that I knew that I was gonna have to address, and that was me and my father having a real honest conversation in ways that I don't think too many people have with their fathers, especially black men, right? When I was six years old, um, I found out I had a half-sister. Um, who was 16, right? Now to a six-year-old, that's awesome, right? Who doesn't love a mid-season casting? You know, so I was like, I was like, I've done seen these other people. You're like, now we, let's bring someone else into the pod. This is dope. Um, and for the next 10 years, I was like, this is awesome. I got a half-sister. But then I started to connect the dots and do the math, right? So if my half-sister is 16 or 10 years older than me, and my, my oldest sister, full sister, is eight years older than me, but I know my parents met in college and they stayed together. They'll get where I'm going at with this, right? We're doing, the math is mathing, or it's not mathing, depending on how you like to look at the glass, half full, half empty. Right, so when I was 14 years old, this was when me and my moms was in Atlanta, and I remember just being like, yo, like, what's up? Like, did this go down? Now mind you, they're divorced by this time, so there's, there's a whole lot of things, and, and she kind of tells me the story. And she gives me the context as to how my half-sister came to be, right? Malawi was formed its independence in 1964, right? This is where my PhD hat comes out. And for the first, from 1964 to 1993, there was only one president, Hastings Kamuzubanda, Dr. Hastings Kamuzubanda. No relation to me, I know we got the same last name, we don't claim him, all right? He from a different part of the country, I don't know, we don't, no connections, right? But for him, um, he felt like he had a right to be dictator. And so in the 70s, he made himself dictator. And he would go around saying, I dictate by consent. Because no Malawians was opposing him. And the few that did had to flee. And one of those people was my grandfather. Another one of those, and you know, he had to go to the US. You know, he didn't want to kill these people because he knew what that might cause in a civil war because it was about North and South. Kamuzu was from the South, my family was from the North. And then I had my great uncle as well who formed the Malawi newspaper. And if you've ever been to Malawi, you've probably seen The Nation, right? That's my uncle's newspaper, right? And they were very critical of what Kamuzu was doing and they were very honest, right? And so Kamuzu got put in jail. And so when my dad came back to Malawi in 1977, he was 22 years old, had just graduated from UMass Amherst, and was hired to be the Olympic coach for Malawi. But when he got there, it was a completely different Malawi than when he left in 1966. You know, Kamuzu's dictatorship was now at its full swing. And anyone that was doing anything that was in contradiction to Kamuzu could be killed, could be put in jail. You know, my dad was harassed for playing tennis one day when Kamusa was giving a rally, right? And so when him and my mom met, right? And I got a song about that too, but we're not doing that tonight. Um, but when him and my mom met, their plan was to get married, move to Malawi, and start a family there. And that's what they began to do. Now anyone that met my mother knows she's a tall, beautiful, light-skinned woman. Now in the 70s, she had a big old afro. Who else was tall, light-skinned, with a big old afro in the 70s? Angela Davis, you know what I'm saying? This is the peak of, on the tail end of black power. And so here's someone, my dad, who's connected to somebody that Kamuzu doesn't like. And here's this new light-skinned woman from America with a fro. And so they barged into his home and they told her she has 24 hours to leave. And so my dad thinks he's never gonna see her again. He thinks he's never gonna leave Malawi again. And so it was in that time that he starts putting on a front, has to go party, has to be, have a smile on his face, because any act of anger, aggression, might be seen as an act against Kamuzu. 
And so he meets a woman, has a kid with that woman. But then something changes and my mother gets in touch with him. And I don't know all those details, but she said, we gotta wait for you to get out. But you gotta take it now. And now my dad didn't know what to do. He didn't know if he stay or go. And so my grandfather was pleading with him not to leave. But he didn't know what to do. He loved my mother. And he didn't feel like there was anything in Malawi for him. And so he left. And he didn't go back again for a long time. And when I was in Malawi, I needed to hear what that story was from him. I knew my mom did the most to put it into context and to be forgiven towards him, but I needed to hear what that meant for him. And he told me. And his story and my mother's story matched up from start to finish. And I'm so grateful for what these moments are because I think like as, as men, as black men especially, we don't, we don't usually have this open dialogue with our fathers. We don't have that connection. And I think a lot of us see sometimes, at least with mine, sort of him walking around living this half-life, this life where dreams weren't always fully realized, this life where the things he wanted and the things he was working for didn't always get realized because over there he had to deal with what he had to deal with, Kamuzu. And then when he came back here, to running away from those ghosts and the actions he did and the actions he did as a black man living in the U.S. also cost him a lot. And so I write this song about that, about me and him going on a hike in Mount Mulanji in Malawi and having this conversation. And I call this song, Message to My Pops. Hope y'all enjoy. So one thing I remember my father telling me in that moment was from the moment he left Malawi, he would have these nightmares. And I remember being younger one time and, and, and I would hear him call out in his sleep. And he told me that those dreams was my grandfather telling him to come home and that he shouldn't have left. And so he was wrestling with that that whole time. He started going back to Malawi in 2005 and did a nonprofit and started giving back to the village. And he told me as soon as he hit home, as soon as he started giving back and honoring the tradition of our family, that those dreams stopped, that those ghosts stopped. I don't know, I just thought that was so cool. This is a story about the ghosts we face. This is a story about the ghosts we face. Yeah. This is a story about the ghosts we face. This is a story about the ghosts we face. This is a story about the ghosts we face. And I ain't talking about them usual ways. And I've seen how you've grown, but I know you're still hurting. So I just gotta get it off my chest then. You paved the way, you let me dream I look to you for everything Even if you wasn't perfect I knew that it was worth it Two kings and one dream in the mountains And I know that those walls are behind us When I look in your eyes and you seem to be free And it's true, what you've been through Standing here before me is nothing short of miracles And you just wanna be To be free, to be free, to be free, to be free, to be free yeah. You can be free This is a story about the ghosts we face, yeah and I ain't talking about them usual ways And I've seen how you've grown But I know you still hurt me So I just gotta get it off my chest then 
I think I needed you to tell me how you made it out And now I'm wondering if I'll ever live a life without All the pain every day I can't stay unless I make a way to be safe But I know it's a strike I guess you had to go I guess I should have known Of all the places go You can always go home You can always go home and one dream in the mountains And I know that those walls are behind us When I look in your eyes and you see me free And it's true What you've been through Standing here before me Is nothing short of miracles And I've seen how you've grown, but I know you're still hurting So I just gotta get it off my chest and Y'all having fun, right? So I, this, this next song, it's kind of like two songs. It's called Summer Can't Last. And I wrote this the second time I went back to Malawi, you know, was for music, right? So I, I go back now and, you know, um, some people know about me in Malawi with the saxophone because of the musicians I play with and the experiences I had. And the first time I went back to play, I was playing at this festival called Lake of Stars, and people from all over the world were there. Um, it's the most white people you'll ever see in Malawi. And I remember playing on that stage in that year of all years, right? It was in Kata Bay, right, where my family's from. And here's the stage, and just a yawn away. My great-grandfather was buried, who I'm named after, right? And his family and all these different people. And so when I say I was playing for the ancestors, you know, we ain't false flexing. We was playing for the ancestors. And I remember just being like my cup is full. And I could stay here forever. But I think we all know, right, that summer can't last. And we have these lives and these responsibilities and these commitments that we have to live with. And those experiences are great, but those experiences are great for us to take with us and go wherever we go. All right. Hope y'all enjoy. Hold on. 
hold on, we got some difficulties, but we're gonna keep this going. How y'all doing? All right. I guess 
second go. song. Y'all can stand up too for this one. This is a funky one. If I gotta leave, then I got to. And if I gotta go, then I got to. If I gotta leave, then I got to. And if I gotta go, then I got to. If I gotta leave, then I got to And if I gotta go, then I ought to Hold on for the better days Remember all the things they say, yeah I saw they lived through it, and I was going through it And now it's time for me to see if I could always do it Breaking all the bridges, diasporic bridges I'm ten toes for these tongue of people and tradition So slow down for the better days Remember all the things they say Cause home is not a place or a time zone It lives where the light and the love roam So if I gotta leave, and if I gotta go Then I'ma make it so they'll see me and they'll never go And if I gotta leave, then I got to Ooh. And I know who we are We got our lives for us to be If it's too much We got the world for us to be And I know who we are we are, we got our lives for us to be If it's too much Can I get a wish, can I get a wish Can I get a wish somewhere Make this last for ever Let me see y'all move with that, y'all can dance, y'all can move I never thought I'd ever be here And now it's time for this band. Thank y'all so much. Thank y'all. I know we went over by a lot, so I apologize. I apologize. But please give it up for this band. Please give it up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Can we do one more? Y'all, y'all are both. First and foremost, they just learned this music. It's the audacity for me. It's not to say we don't have one in us. Are we allowed to? What's the deal? I'm not trying to break no laws in Atlanta. I'm trying to come back. So we were actually going to do this song, and we didn't. Um, so, so let's let's do that. Um, So this is a funny song. Um, I wrote, I, I started writing this song in uh, 2018. And I went up to Greenacre by high school. My boy was up there. And I live, I live close to there, so it's not like that like much of a journey, right? And so no one was there, and I liked the piano in Rhymer Hall. And like, it's not like I'd be going up there like that. Like, this was just extreme circumstances. I had just broken up with a girl for, of two and a half years, and I was like, I just, like most songwriters, you, you gotta write. And so I went up there and I was sitting at the piano in Rhymer Hall all alone. And I had a cup of coffee and I went up to use the bathroom and as I went up to use the bathroom, I, I hit these notes. And I was like, there's a song there. I hit those notes with my elbow, right? It wasn't like on purpose, right? So I was like, let's go back to this and I found the chords and I had this idea of, you know, I don't know. I think so many times in life we don't know where we are, right? And we don't know what we're doing. And so I didn't have too much to this song written. And like a lot of my songs, like I'm telling you, I start writing them and experiences happen. And then you're like, this song feels different. And I, and I say, it's like you're writing a song that's still happening. And so I had half of this song written for four years. And then this past um, month, I was at MCBI in Florida. Something about these Baha'i schools, man, that just be sparking creativity. Um, and I was just like, just had this lyrics, and they came to me, and I was like, I think this is about my mom's. And, you know, because when she first passed, I didn't know what to do. You know, when there's so much questioning I was doing. You know, I woke up on a Sunday morning, got back from a gig at like 2 a.m. I was doing my morning stretches. And actually, she was the first person I called that morning, right? And so when I got the call from my Donna that my mom passed, I didn't know what to do, but what I knew was I needed to call my, my stepbrother who lived in Queens, and we were gonna hop in my car, and we were gonna drive to Bourne, Massachusetts, where she passed. Now there was no fruitful reason for me to go to Bourne, Massachusetts, other than just I wanted to be in the place in the house where she ascended to, and that just felt like the right thing to do. And then the next day, we leave Bourne, and we go to the western part of Massachusetts where most of my family's from. Right? And I remember meeting up with my auntie, my auntie Linda, who was my mom's best friend. And I remember just being so confused as to what do I do? Because at the time, right, we had my 91-year-old grandmother that we had to take care of. So it's like, how am I supposed to live this life? I'm in New York, I'm living my best life in Brooklyn, I'm playing with some of the best musicians in the world, but I know home is calling me. And I didn't know what to do, but I went on a run. And on that run, it was crazy, was, I remember this conversation with moms, and it was back in November 2021, and I was in having this conversation with my mom on the phone, and I was on I was on I was on set for the Whitney Houston movie, right? I'm in like a snippet of that movie. Like if you pause it at the right moment, you're gonna see a light-skinned brother with a saxophone two-stepping, but it's like a millisecond. All right? And I remember on that set, though, meeting so many inspiring musicians. And at the time, I had half foot in New York, half foot in Massachusetts. I had my apartment in Brooklyn, but I had work that I was still doing in Massachusetts. And I was like, I don't know what to do. And my mom, right, y'all know her and she's great. But my mom's also from Boston. And, and you know, Boston, there's a hardened exterior, right? So, so mom wasn't the biggest at giving compliments. And so what she said next meant so much to me. And she told me all these stories about growing up, me growing up, about music and how she felt like I was always trying to create, I was always trying to do something, and that I had a valuable story to tell, and that the only way I was gonna do that was to go to New York because I had exhausted all my avenues in Massachusetts. And I had forgotten that conversation that happened a year prior to that until my run. And so for the last year, there's been so many moments where I'm just like, I don't know but a conversation with it will come up. 
either on my run or I drive or in the shower. And so I write this, I wrote these lyrics for my mama. Now these lyrics are fresh. So I'm gonna pull up the lyrics on here. That's a little tacky, but just. And I don't know. And I don't know. And I don't know where we're going anymore. Bring it down just a little for this next part. I'm standing on my feet. I'm thinking all the things that you said to me that I wish I could see. I'm six feet over you, and I pray for your soul through. But I know it don't need me, cause it's soaring, finally free. Yeah. I'm waking up as if I'll never leave. I'm shedding tears because I just can't believe that you're gone and I'm here all alone and I feel that all the things that you was running from gonna catch up to me and I'll never know what to do without you, without you, I don't know and I don't know, and I don't know where we're going anymore to run in circles, I used to run in circles, trying to catch the end of my own tail. I used to run away now, all I do is pray now, trying to understand the world we're in. Cause there's pain and there's greed, but there's love that I need, if I hear maybe I can find happiness too. All I know is it's hard, but I fight through the scars. Maybe I can't get over how much I miss you. Now this next part's a sing along. Try this out with me. And I just wanna be, I just wanna be free. Can y'all try that one? This is our last song. I just wanna be, I just wanna be, I just wanna be, I just wanna be. I wanna hear y'all do that, do that with me. This is our last moment, all right? Here we go. I just wanna be, I just wanna be. I just wanna be, I just wanna be free. Let me hear y'all. I just wanna be, I just wanna be.
just want to be, I just want to be, I just want to be free. Let's do that one last time. I just want to be, I just want to be, I just want to be, I just want to be free. Thank you so much. My name is Vitaly Banda, and I hope you all enjoyed.